I have decided to uh, share the code that I developed uh, in a video from 2021, uh, where we basically uh, tested the Martingale dollar cost strategy and with on coin flipping games uh, using Monte Carlo simulations. Now, I just wanted to bring up uh, that just a disclaimer, uh, this is not financial advice. Please make sure to read the information that I am highlighting here before proceeding to the video. Uh, I also wanted to bring up that this, of course, uh, notebook contains the material that I developed on a former video in 2021, which I've, I am linking to this notebook as well. Uh, and a YouTube video that I'm making right now, of course, and all of those, uh, the link to this notebook will be below this newer video description and the former as well. Now, to begin with uh, this notebook and the simulation uh, should be simulations we've developed, we of course start with the uh, with the most uh, elementary and reduced uh, concepts, the basically lower level uh, fundamental and building blocks we need for the simulation, which in this case will be of course the nature of the the coin flipping event itself and just a single coin flip. And here we define you can see that we define a coin flip of heads with an outcome of heads as one and an outcome of tails is zero. And this is just so that we can basically use a continuous, not a continuous, a discrete uniform random simulation, random distribution with uh, zero and one as the single numbers with equal probability of occurring. Now, of course, this uh, function, which is a very simple function really, uh, y you can we can integrate it to, to a deeper function. Uh, in this case would be to actually two deeper higher level functions one, uh, a martingale function and a nostrad function, both of these would basically be representing the betting outcome of a coin flipping game for a single player and the decision, the decisions that he makes on that betting outcome. That means on whether he wins or loses, which actually is more critical for the martingale case. You can see that for the martingale case after, of course, a coin flip is run here with the former, with the former uh, function, then uh, the player has to make uh, make some choices, make some decisions here, right? So in this case, if he, you can see that the guess is actually an input call or an input variable, and the values that it would have would be also zero or one for heads or tails. So if he, for instance, uh, is unable to guess right, so if he guesses for head, and the coin flip outcome was tails, then he loses. And so this is the first conditional statement here. Uh, you can see that we have also bank, which would stand for the bank account of that single player as an input call. So if he loses he that bet, he loses the amount of money he betted. So in this case, that variable is also an input call and it would be the amount of, uh, of money he bet for that outcome. So it would be Let's say we bet $100, then he loses that $100. The $100 gets subtracted from his bank account. And besides that, because this is Martingale, of course, if he loses, he has to double down on his bet. So if the original base bet, which is also $100, right, he started with $100, uh, then his bet doubles to $200. So that's what this operator does. It's basically bet equals bet times 2. Now, of course, uh, because once again, to reiterate, because this is a martingale, uh, we have to keep the the specific head or tail guess in memory if he loses. And that can be done basically by generating, by setting up the, the guess as an outcome or as an output uh, variable to the function. Right, so you can see that if he loses, then there's no redefinition of the guess variable, so it's basically uh, outputted to the to the function. Now, for the case that he uh, he wins, however, he guesses a random head or tail again, which is basically this line. He uh, also uh, the same amount that he betted is added to his bank account. So he bet $100 and he starts with a uh, 1000. Then of course, uh, you know, his bank account would be at $1,100 now for the next iterations. Uh, of course, also he doesn't double down on his bet because he won and Martingale strategy is basically strategy based on the decisions you make when you lose. And so <clears throat> for the case he wins, he doesn't double him down on his bet and the memory for that 
guess for the winning guess is not retained. And that's you can see of course from the first line of as I explained. So the out the out I swallowed something. <laughs> the out uh, output functions would just be the ending of the bank account, the next guess here just represented as guess, and of course the the amount of dollars for his bet, whether it's double double down uh, for the losing case or not. And so that's basically it for this Martingale function. Now for the case where you don't do not follow a strategy, we also have to define it, uh, of course, an, another function for it. And in this case, uh, we're defining it as a no strat, giving it a, it's just defining the, the name of it. Uh, you can see that the properties from the losing conditional are no longer retained on this part. Uh, whereas the winning is basically the the conditions for the winning case are basically the same as Martingale. As I mentioned, this is a strategy. Martingale is a strategy is based on lose, on the on making decisions for the losing outcome. And so you can see that memory is no no longer retained for the for the losing guess because he just makes another guess here. Uh, he loses his money and he does not double down on his bet. As is as was neither the case for the winning case for the f former Martingale strategy, so you can see that this is basically how we define our two different strategies, one of which does not follow Martingale. Now, of course, we expand further than. Now we expand further than, uh, to just defining, no, not not a single coin flip iteration, but defining. Uh, multiple amounts of coin flip or iterations. We can define here. We have defined here uh, ten thousand coin uh, con subsequent uh, coin flips, one after the other, uh, for a single player. And basically, what we are doing here in this function is we are uh, using these recursive definitions of bank account, bank account balances, and guess and guesses that you take uh, to propagate the betting strategy. Uh, over, not over time, but over the coin flip iterations that are that are necessary to fulfill the game until it ends. And so, for every iteration, we are actually uh, appending the bank account balance after each uh, after each coin flip. And that is done just by we are just using this function, this list, to append all of those bank account values to, for the single player, and then we are returning that uh, same list as an output variable okay of course uh, after we have defined this case for one player uh, which uh, basically undergoes a game of several coin flips we can expand it further even and incorporate not only a single player but multiple m amount of players if you like and track and store all the information from all the bank accounts as they evolve over the coin flip iterations for all the players that we are uh, defining in the game. So in case we want to like define 100, track the, the bank accounts from, from 100 players, we just have to define change this variable to 100. Uh, as you can see, uh, we are also using a list to store all the memory and after from all the bank accounts of all the players. So that would Basically, because that is a uh, this is a bank account which propagates over the which is actually the historical bank account balance of all the of all the different players. This would actually make a two-dimensional uh, array or an array structure. Now, because these are originally lists, this is actually a, a nested list. But to make things simpler and to be able to uh, extract some very interesting statistics uh, in a nicer way. We can just, uh, you know, uh, transform this nested array, nested list, sorry, into a two-dimensional array with a NumPy function, which is what we've done here. And so now, what we can extract from this is just uh, we can. What I've done here is I printed out some statements for just uh, uh, printing out the final bank account balance, standard deviation, and and average for all 100 players in the game. So we can run this. Actually, I'll just run all of these functions up to this point. 
uh, run before, run after. Yeah, run before. And now we can start with actually our simulation. Simulation. So as I mentioned, uh, uh, for the game, for this game definition, game function, the first input call is number of players. So we have to redefine that as n, and we have given it a value of 100, just simulating uh, the bank account history of 100 players, w whether they follow the no strategy uh, strategy <laughs> or the Martingale strategy. And we are storing the the data of those bank accounts for both cases with the different variables you see on these two lines. BNS for bank accounts, no strategy, and BM for those with particle. Right, so we run the simulations. And of course, because we told it to, to print out uh, you know, these statistics, that's what the, the results will give out. So you can see that for the case where we do not follow a strategy, the average ending bank balance for all players is actually close to $1,000 which is actually the starting bank account for all 100 players, 1,000. Uh, however, the standard deviation for all players actually spans beyond 1,000 is $20,000, which actually leaves, it is understood that it leaves a lot of players in the red. So owing a lot of substantial amounts of money. Now for the Martingale case, however, we get that the average ending bank balance is close to $1 million. For all players, as I, I reiterate, uh, all players start with a bank account balance of 1,000 from going, so going from 1,000 to 1 million is, is impressive. Uh, the ending standard balance, the ending bank account standard deviation is also relatively high. So the, there are no players left in the red. Um, none of them lose money from their, their initial starting bank account. Uh, so you can see that the, the lowest they go is 980. The lowest outcome is $980,000, which is not bad. Of course, here we're just defining some f uh, functions to make nicer plots of all the data and histograms, which will basically give the spread of all the final bank balances for all players following either the no strategy implementation or the Martingale strategy. And of course we're just plotting uh, here we're just uh, running the first function we've defined the plots for no strategy and strategy. And so here also from what you can see here it's maybe a little confusing but here I'm just showing the last five uh, what do you call it? The bank account balances of all players uh, on their last five coin flip iterations. So you can see that a lot of players in the end for the north when they do not follow the strategy, there's a lot of players left in the red. I mean, you can see negative, this would indicate negative dollars. So a lot of them are indebted, end up being indebted or whatever. Whereas for the case of Martingale, um, we, none of them are actually left in the red. This label 10E to the six actually stands for 1 million. So this is in units of 1 million a lot of them are actually have accounts that are also late in $1 million. As I mentioned, the lowest actually is $940,000 for the one who earns the less amount of money. So there's no players that actually lose. Now, if we want to just show the whole spread starting from the, starting from the beginning iteration to the end, this is what it would look. And you can see that for the no, when you do not follow a strategy, uh, it starts very nicely, and then there's players spreading out towards very negative bank account balances. Whereas for the case for the Martingale, we do see some very interesting also occurrences. We see a player actually that at some point or another, a single player uh, had to bet more than 10, yeah, like actually around uh, 50, $50 million dollars at some point or other, he had to bet what he didn't have. So but this minus indicates for owing, for debt. So he ended up going that far because, as I mentioned, this Martingale strategy had doubles down every time you lose. So he must have lost substantial amount of times consecutively to double down on his bet that much. Now, these are strange occurrences, but they still occur even for a sample size uh, as small as 100 players and 
iterating over 6,000 simulations, right? So you can see that this is a, uh, though it seems that it's a robust strategy, uh, it is highly risky strategy, especially if, you know, you do not have the really, for players that do not really have, and I'm just talking, of course, in a very educational theoretical sense, uh, for these theoretical quote unquote players, because I don't, would not want to, to, to look like I'm talking about real life, of course. As I mentioned, not financial advice. Um, and yeah, so those really simulation players that do not have the heart to bet on that much, then it's not, not a good strategy really for them. Moving on to the next, uh, the final, final really uh, plots that I have here. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, I also developed a histogram function uh, to plot the final bank account balances of the 100 balance of 100 gamblers uh, from the betting using the different type of betting systems. The betting system with a which does not have a strategy or random chance. The first one, you can see that as I mentioned, there's a lot of them that are left in the red. You can see it here. The kurtos is relatively low. However, um, for the case where players that are following Martingale, yeah, you have a narrower uh, distribution, very nicely, uh, relatively uniform and centered around $1 million. Of course, if we wanted to um, plot this together, we can do so. You can see that the label here stands for 1 million in units. So it goes from $0 million to $1 million. And marking L strategy, you can see the very, very large wide divide between between the strategies at the at the end of the bank balances. So with that, I would like to end my video. Just wanted to bring up again, reiterate that this is not financial advice, and and if you also like my video, please give it a thumbs up. If you really like my content, please don't forget to subscribe. And and that would be it. I will be placing the links to the notebook and associated material below the video description. Thank you.